Joining us again today is Mark Howery from the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. And today we're going to talk about bird feeders and different types of seeds. So we have a, a nice collection that you've brought here today. And why don't we get started here on the end with our thistle feeder. Okay, well there, there's about a half a dozen basic types of seed that are good and commercially available for birds. And I tried to bring a feeder for each type of seed to talk mm -hmm. about. Uh, the first one here is thistle seed, also known as Niger seed. Mm -hmm. And it's important to know that the thistle or the Niger that you see in stores is not the same plant that grows along the roadsides. It's not that thistle. So if we're you not going to end up with a bunch of weeds in right, our yard. <laughs> right, you will not end up with a bunch of thistle plants under your feeder. Okay. But this, this is a high oil mm -hmm. uh, content seed that is really sought after by smaller birds, particularly finches. Uh, in the winter months, birds have to eat between a third and a half of their body weight each day just to maintain themselves. So they, they really gravitate to the high oil foods like right. thistle. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a great one for attracting finches. I will say one of the downsides to thistle seed and here's just a handful of it. Uh, one of the downsides to thistle seed, because of that high oil, high oil content, that oil will break down at warm temperatures. Okay. So if you store this in the house or if you store this in a warm garage, after a few months it won't be, it won't be as good to the birds and the birds will stop using it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a good idea to keep it in a cool place, either a refrigerator or a basement or a cool garage, uh, and, and don't plan on keeping it for more than a year. Okay, and primarily we put this out in the winter time for those gold finches and purple finches. Yes. Uh, so if we store it in the garage, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. You're right, okay. exactly right. But it's, it's through the summer that it's not going to, to right. last as well. The, the next seed I brought is safflower seed. This is another high oil, mm -hmm. high protein seed the birds really like. It's very pretty too. It is a pretty <laughs> seed. And, and thistle, or sorry, safflower has a very thick husk to it. It's, mm -hmm. It is no trouble at all for a house finch or a cardinal to crack that open, but uh, sparrows have a hard time with this, blackbirds have a hard time with this. So for people that have sparrow and blackbird problems, this is a nice alternative for reducing the attractiveness of the feeder to those birds. But the only downside really to safflower that I see is its price. It is the most expensive of right. these seeds. Um, you definitely want to put it in a squirrel proof kind of feeder. <laughs> we don't want to feed all the wildlife with yes, it. Yes, <laughs> you can't afford to feed all the wildlife with it. This is a general seed mix here. This is a mix of blackwell sunflower, which mm -hmm. is a high protein, high oil seed. Okay. Uh, the white ones are safflower. Mm -hmm. And there's also a few peanuts in here. And this is a mesh type uh, feeder that is really designed for sunflower and peanuts okay. that I've got a mix in here right now. The nice thing about this kind of feeder is that you can have a whole flock of birds land on this. You can have six or eight birds and they land on the mesh and then pull out the individual seeds and eat them and there's a little tray to catch the the seeds that spill through. Okay. Uh, all of these feeders here are ones that you would hang up off the ground because the birds that tend to feed on Sunflower seeds, safflower seeds, and thistle are all arboreal birds. Things like finches, cardinals, chickadees, titmice, woodpeckers. Mm -hmm. So putting the feeder up off the ground four to six feet helps put it in their comfort zone. Okay. And it helps, helps in retaining seed. It so keeps so from wasting seed. The main difference with this is just we have the perches. So we're limited to the number of birds that are going to feed on it. Right, just okay. have four birds at a time. But it does help keep the uh, the seed dry. So in a mm -hmm. in a dry in a wet period, this is a great feeder. Uh, in a dry period, that's a wonderful feeder. Okay. Uh, another type of feeder is a platform feeder. As I mentioned before, we have some birds that are comfortable feeding up off the ground. Right. We have other birds like juncos. Uh, some of the native sparrows and, and doves and quail that prefer to feed on the ground. And so this platform here, we can put it on a little stake, mm -hmm. put it about six to eight inches off the ground, and it's down in the comfort level of those birds. There's some very fine white seed known as millet. Yeah, I noticed the different seed mix here. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the, the little fine white seeds are, are eaten by juncos and a lot of the very small birds. Uh, the sunflower is eaten by cardinals and tohis that mm -hmm. will feed on the ground. Uh, and then the corn is for uh, doves and quail that come into the yard. Okay. Uh, and a kind of an inexpensive alternative, for, particularly for people that live out in rural settings where they have lots of doves and lots of quail, mm -hmm. uh, is, is chicken scratch. Chicken okay. scratch is cracked corn and yeah. milo. Uh, milo is a larger seed, a little bit harder for birds to eat, but, but certainly doves and quail and blackbirds mm -hmm. can feed on it. So it's a cheap alternative. Yeah. Now something I notice is you don't have the millet 
in our aerial feeders. Yes, thank you for bringing that mm -hmm. up. Yes, it, when you, those of, well, probably a lot of your viewers have experienced this, when you put mixed seed like this, sunflower and millet in a hanging feeder, what you find is the arboreal birds like the chickadees and the tent mice and the finches will take out the sunflower seed and they'll kick all the millet down to the ground. Right. <laughs> uh, so this just kind of prevents that step. We just put, I, I really recommend just keeping seeds like millet and milo on the ground mm -hmm. where those kind of birds feed on it. I see a lot of birds feeding under those aerial feeders if I have millet in it. Yes, <laughs> and, and they're typically the ground feeding birds yes. like doves and juncos. Exactly. Now we're going to move a little bit away from the seed type feeders and you have a, a suet feeder. Tell us about this. Yes, well suet feeder is great for uh, birds that are partially insect eating birds mm -hmm. like uh, mockingbirds, wrens, woodpeckers, chickadees, and tent mice. Uh, and it's a, it's a mixture made up usually of, of fat like lard mm -hmm. uh, and peanut butter. And then sometimes seed will get mixed into it or fruit like raisins. I like to buy the, the suet cakes that have raisins because the mockingbirds okay. love the fat and the raisins this combined. This one has apples in it. Yeah, this is a little <laughs> chopped up apple. Again, the mockingbirds like that and the wrens seem to like it. And it just comes in a store-bought cake. Okay. Just slide it into the feeder and then the feeder latches closed. And then again, we hang it up from a tree. The cage allows the birds to perch on it mm -hmm. uh, and, and pick off pieces of the, of the uh, suet. It's also a good deterrent for things like crows that will want to come <laughs> in and rip the whole cake out and fly right. off with it, or raccoons. And it's a, a good idea to hang this out oh, on a shepherd's hook or a, way out on the end of a branch where it's more difficult for raccoons and possums and squirrels to get to okay. it. Because Everything likes suet. <laughs> okay, a very rich source of protein. It's a very rich source of protein and fat, and everything is after it if they can get it. So these last two are more for our summer birds, uh, hummingbirds and orioles. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and we're kind of getting past that season now, but it's a good thing to keep in mind for the spring. Right. Uh, this first one is a hummingbird feeder, and it, it contains a sugar water mixture in it, and we recommend roughly one part sugar to four parts water, but mm -hmm. you can deviate a little bit stronger, a little bit weaker. Uh, we have hummingbirds in Oklahoma from roughly the first of April, I'm sorry, the middle of April, through the early part of October. But I recommend that people leave at least one hummingbird feeder up till Halloween, because we will get some hummingbirds, particularly young ones that move through in October. Okay. And this gives them an energy boost. The, the migration in hummingbirds is triggered by day length. And I know there's a, a wives' tale that's been around for decades about taking the hummingbird feeders down at Labor Day so that the hummingbirds will migrate. And that's, that is simply not true. <laughs> the changing day length triggers their migration, and that typically okay. happens in the middle of September. But we do get a few stragglers. Some people put red dye in their hummingbird feeders, um, but we have plenty of red here to attract the birds. Is yeah. the dye You're exactly a problem right. or? Just unnecessary. I, I think it's unnecessary in this mm -hmm. in this day. Before they started making feeders with red on them, I think the dye was important to attract the birds because mm -hmm. hummingbirds are sight feeders. They, they they are attracted to bright colors, especially red and orange and pink. Uh, so the dye was helpful, but now with all of these commercial feeders that have red on them, it, it's unnecessary. Okay. It's an unnecessary step. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the last feeder that we have here is an oriole feeder, and that's become very popular in the last 15 yeah, years. And there's a couple of, they're, they're, they're fantastic mm -hmm. birds. And we have orioles in Oklahoma from late April through about the second week of September. They've okay. already migrated this year. Um, and you can feed orioles in three different ways. They, they are primarily insect eaters. That's the, that's the bulk of their diet. Okay. But they can be attracted with sugar water, which is why sometimes you'll see orioles coming to hummingbird feeders. And this has a reservoir that can hold sugar water in it. Mm -hmm. Again, a, a four to one or a one to four mix of sugar to water. Uh, or you can put orange slices on this. But what I find really beneficial is grape jelly. And I was gonna say with the sugar water mixture, there's a professor here at OSU named Dennis Martin in the horticulture mm -hmm. department. He has been feeding Orioles for years. And one tip that he passed along to me back in the 90s was mixing a little bit of tang in with the sugar water. That gives tang. it an orange <laughs> color, an orange taste, and it really seems to bring in the Orioles. Very interesting. But I have very good luck with grape jelly. Mm -hmm. And it's very simple. This feeder has a couple of reservoirs on the top of it mm -hmm. and just put in some grape jelly mm -hmm. and sit back and wait for the birds to come in. And you'll find orioles feeding on this, robins, mockingbirds, and house finches will all come in. How wonderful. 
Now I know when we put sweet things out in the landscape, we also tend to attract ants, but you have a nice uh, barrier for these. Yes, I do. You are exactly right. We get ants. Ants go hand in hand with a lot of these things. This is an ant guard, and an ant guard is basically a plastic cup mm -hmm. with a hook on the top and the bottom. Uh, get this on here correctly. The, uh, you can put water in the ant guard. It creates essentially a moat that the ants can't get through and then we hook that on top of our Oriole feeder or on top of our hummingbird feeder and we've got a ant proof feeder on our hands. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And it works wonders. I, I, it's worth the investment. I think <laughs> every hummingbird and Oriole feeder should have an ant guard. Yeah, anyone who's had to deal with the ants would certainly appreciate it. Yes. Well, Mark, you have some wonderful uh, information here for us. Thank you so much for sharing all of these feeders with us. Oh, well, thank you for the opportunity to come and talk about birds. Mm -hmm. We've looked at different types of feeders and seed for different birds. Once we've identified who we want to attract, we need to think about where where does that feeder go in the landscape? And I'm sure you have a few helpful tips. I do have a few a few tips. And this here is a fantastic place that you guys have chosen for this feeder mm -hmm. because two things to keep in mind are well actually one thing that's interrelated is cover. You want to have a feeder that is close to escape cover mm -hmm. and yet doesn't provide ambush cover for predators. Okay. Because when we feed birds, the, the, we do a great service to the birds in providing food for them, but we also alter their behavior a little bit and attract predators. There's a downside to it. Okay. So to kind of mitigate mm -hmm. the effect of predators, we want to put the feeder where it's close to cover. Uh, my rule of thumb is 10 to 15 feet from cover. This is fantastic because there's cover just right above it in these cedar trees. And at the same time, we don't want a lot of ground cover for 10 or 15 feet around here where a cat or some other predator could okay. ambush the birds. So mm -hmm. this is a wonderful spot here. Open area below, dense cover above in the winter time. And it's, it's fantastic. The downfall of this is we can't see it from our house or from another area so let's go look at another ideal spot but out in the landscape where we can enjoy the birds feeding. Sounds like a great idea. Okay. <laughs> Well, Mark, I think this is more typical of the situation where people have feeders um, kind of at the edge of woody cover, but where they can see it, whether from a path or from the house. Yes, this, this is another nice spot because, again, this feeder is about 15 feet from this large magnolia, and then in this direction there's a, a, a several viburnum bushes, mm -hmm. so there's escape cover if a predator comes in, and yet there's no ambush cover mm -hmm. close to the feeder that the birds can get to. Okay, and we've done the same with our hanging feeder on a shepherd's crook. Um, a lot of times we see this in a, a, a lawn, but it's near some trees. Yeah, and here it's next to the, to the magnolia tree for mm -hmm. good very cover good in cover. That. It's so dense. Something else that we wanted to talk about are squirrel proofing and this is a really interesting uh, squirrel proof mechanism that uh, an old neighbor of mine used. When I first saw this I thought what is she doing with those slinkies but I realized um, she had them on her elevated platform feeders and I never once saw a squirrel climb it because it moves. They come up to it and they don't like that movement and it, it kept them from climbing up either a shepherd's crook or up, up to the platform feeder because squirrels are pretty clever at, at the way they climb. That's true. That, that's a fantastic idea. I've never tried that, but I think I'll, I'll, we'll have to put I'll it have to give it a try. And it's, and it's an inexpensive Very technique. Simple. You're not really out any money to try it. I, I, I bet we're going to see a lot of these in Oklahoma <laughs> this year. Now you brought a few feet, uh, squirrel protectors as well here I, for I, us. I did, and I'll have to say, just to kind of preface this, I always tell people that squirrels are very motivated to get into feeders and right. squirrels have all day to figure out how to get into feeders. So no feeder is 100% squirrel proof. Okay. We've got a couple of deterrents. That slinky deterrent, I think it's got good potential. <laughs> I think that'll work. This here is a cage type mm -hmm. uh, deterrent. Squirrels can't get into the feeder. They can sit here and get the fallen food on the platform, but they can't empty a feeder the way right. they could in a, a lot of feeders. Mm -hmm. Also, it can keep out raccoons to some extent, mm -hmm. uh, crows and larger birds, like people that live in rural areas that have problems with crows or grackles. Right. This is a good way to keep, keep those birds 
out as well as, as squirrels. Okay. And then here recently, people have been experimenting with different kinds of baffles. There's some large mm -hmm. plastic, clear plastic baffles that extend out a right. couple of feet that are great. Uh, this is a smaller design mm -hmm. uh, that with, it's very steep. So the squirrels can't, they can, they can hang on with their back feet and, and lay across this, but they can't reach they around can't to reach the feeder. Under. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. steep and yet wide at the end. Uh, and so far so good. It's been a very good squirrel deterrent. One thing to keep in mind though is squirrels can jump from the ground up to a feeder about four to five feet. Okay. Squirrels can jump out from a trunk to a feeder about six feet. Wow. And they can jump down or over from a branch six or seven feet. Okay. So you, you need to kind of put it out away from mm -hmm. those pathways that squirrels use. Okay, excellent. Well, I think we have some good tips on how to uh, best use feeders in the landscape, the right kind of seed for, for the birds we want. Thank you very much again for sharing with us. Oh, well, thank you. Mm -hmm.